This video is sponsored by HarperDB. HarperDB is a distributed database built for developers of any skill level. It has an easy to use REST API and supports NoSQL and SQL including joins. The Management Studio allows you to install, design, cluster and manage your databases without writing a line of code. It includes resources like example code, SDKs and drivers such as this awesome React hook on NPM. You can register for a free instance of HarperDB Cloud or use the promo code CodeEvolution1 for free credits at the link mentioned in the description. Hey everyone, in this video I want to help you prepare for your next React interview by going over a couple of React and Redux topics which are likely to be asked from an interview point of view. Of course, this is not an exhaustive list by any means but it's a list you should definitely prepare for. Let's begin. Now it might seem a bit strange, but the first thing you should prepare for is an answer to the question, what do you like and dislike about React? It's a nice breaker, but at the same time, it helps the interviewer gauge an understanding of your React knowledge. I personally love unidirectional flow from parent to child and the fact that React is pretty much JavaScript. Angular or Vue on the other hand have two-way data flow and also their own syntax like vif, vlse, ngif, ng4 and so on. One thing that I disliked about React, at least initially, was JSX. It took me a while to understand but I would have definitely liked it if it was simpler. Now Vue can have your own likes and dislikes but it is surely a question to prepare for. Next, if you are a junior dev, you could also be asked about conditional rendering and also rendering a list of elements in React. So make sure you're aware of them. More importantly, prepare for what is the significance of having a key when rendering a list of elements. You need to mention how React compares elements under the hood to re-render only what is changed. And by using index as keys, make sure to also learn what is a potential bug that you can introduce when using index as a key. The next topic that you need to be prepared for is a class components lifecycle methods. All the hooks have been out for over a year now, lifecycle methods are still a key question for an interview. Why? Well, if you think about it, there are plenty of companies that have been working on their product for a few years now. So there will always be legacy code that you need to maintain. And that legacy code uses class components. So make sure to learn the mounting phase, the updation phase and the unmounting phase methods and also the order of invocation and a brief description of when you would use each one of them. Another topic that you definitely should prepare for is the context API. Be prepared to answer what is prop drilling and how you can overcome that using the context API. Once you have class components and context out of the way, make sure to focus on React hooks. What was the need for hooks? And learn about the usage of useState, useEffect and useContext as they are the most common hooks that even a junior dev ought to know. When it comes to use effect, be prepared to explain how it relates to component did mount, component did update and component will unmount lifecycle methods. Now if you have a good amount of React experience, make sure you are also prepared for questions on optimization. Topics to read about are pure components, React memo, use memo hook and use callback hook. These help you prevent unnecessary re-renders in your React application. Alright, next question. How do you share logic across components? This is a question that will really help the interviewer understand how reusable your React code is. You can talk about high order components, render props pattern or even custom hooks. If you can give examples from your recent project, all the more better. The last question on React is, what are some of the packages that you use along with React? For example, 
for styling, for routing, form handling, for state management, and if you use a Create React app or a custom Webpack configuration. So make sure you're aware of the React ecosystem in the project that you work on. All right, that is about React. Next, let's move on to Redux. Now, when it comes to the React ecosystem, Redux is one of those libraries that crawls its way into an interview. Packages like React Router or Material UI don't have any underlying concept to understand. But React Redux has a pattern that you need to be aware of. A lot of the companies use Redux and sort of expect the candidate to be aware of it. So here are a few things that you need to be prepared for. First and foremost, be prepared to answer what exactly is Redux. When you explain that it is a state management library which will solve the problem of prop drilling, expect the follow-up question to be how do you decide whether to choose the context API or Redux in your project. If it's a small project, context with use reducer might be the way to go, but if it's a pretty large project, Redux with its dev tools is definitely helpful. Next, you can expect a question to explain the different parts of Redux. So be prepared to answer what is the Redux store, what are actions, what are action creators, and what are reducers. Make sure you can explain in simple terms how the control flows between these different parts. Be prepared for questions on the React Redux library as well. What exactly does the connect function do? What do map state to props and map dispatch to props actually do? Why should you dispatch an action to update the state and not update the store directly? In a reducer, why should you return a new object as state and not modify the existing state object? An understanding of all these questions and topics will help you ace your next React Redux interview. Now you can find answers to all these questions in my React Redux tutorial series. The last thing that I want to mention is about coding rounds. Even if you're great with React, coding rounds typically involve creating applications which might have a tricky layout or creating popular components like a toast notification or a modal. So don't be surprised if you're required to bring together your CSS knowledge along with React. All right, although short, I hope you now have a fair bit of idea on what to expect in your next React interview. But remember, your front-end interviews don't always focus on just JavaScript. If you would like to prepare better on JavaScript and problem solving, make sure to check out my preparing for a front-end interview course for which the link is available in the description at a 50% discounted price. Thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe for more front-end content and I'll see you guys in the next video.